All right. It has been way too long. I have missed this game so much. Welcome back to Iron Sworn Star Forged Vault Savarn. It's a special episode today because it has been quite a while since I last played. And some things are going to change here. The story is going to continue. All that fun stuff. But our intrepid explorer, Ardell Santos, currently wounded, battered. His hover bike is currently out of commission and busted a bit. I believe he it is battered. Nope, it is at one health, so it is not completely busted. Um, it is a dire situation for our explorer here. And um, this is going to be a situation where he's going to have to find a way out and forward to continue on with his explorations. And... What we're going to do right now is sort of do a recap and a special move. Um, one that I've done before, but this time around we're just going to start the session off by rolling on the beginner session uh, because it is a significant chapter of play, mostly because I have not been at the table playing these games in a long time. So let's get right back into it with a, a roll of a D100 to see what sort of thing that we're going to address as we cinematically come back to the story. Uh, that is a zero one, so a one. Flashback reveals an aspect of your background or nature. Okay, so... What we want to do here is we're going to look at our Del Santos character sheet here. And we know a few things about our Del Santos. Our Del Santos is a Trukin, basically human, from an arcology uh, known as... I uh, forgot off the top of my head, but we have the map from where he is from. He is from the Arcology of Vault, V-U-L-T, in the Salt Plains on the Cerulean Maw of the Vaults of, of the Sands of Varn, on the planet of Varn. And that is where we are at. Um, and so that's where he is from, and he was part of the administrative class of individuals. So he had access to knowledge. He was, he was part and parcel to um, archiving of data and uh, tracking down information. He was kicked out of his vault for having a... His companion is a protocol bot that is sort of a, a cyborg... A, a, um, cyberware type of piece that is on his um, brow, on his, uh, I think it was his right brow, that can detach and be, be a protocol bot to help with translations and stuff like that. And he, with that, he has a firebrand ability that he can use fire to do things with. But all this comes at a cost because all of this is due to a nanobot infestation of of his of his uh personage and that is not taken kindly or taken well with the the denizens of a true kin society that want to stay true and be just human and nothing else no 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 um new beasts allowed no cacogen which are like mutant humans no people with implants or anything like that so he got kicked out 
Um, he also mistrusts Kakujin because he's had a few run-ins with Kakujin in the past uh, in this journey after he got kicked out. So he does not like Kakujin. So what, what, what more do we want to reveal about Ardell Santos? Um, I'm going to look back at some of the... Um, some of the let's see aspect okay archives of bones somewhere right and we have a mystic around the abandoned city that we went to okay he is all right ambitious and Ambitions outgrew <clears throat> his origins. Um, <clears throat> something is out there. Find a way off this rock to the stars is his epic background vow. Okay, so let us roll on some so a some um, a table here. Let, let us roll. Um, <clears throat> Let us roll back backstory prompts. Now these were also part of the character building, but we can uh, add this to his previous story. Uh, uh, 63. 63. You were denied a birthright. Okay. So we have a flashback. Now, I don't know what this deny a birthright. What would a, his birthright be as part of this administrative class that he did grow up and become part of? Um, and he's in this arcology that likes Trukin. And you know what? He was denied his birthright because of his, his abilities and his infestation, which gave him his abilities. Um, which arguably has made him uh, able to survive the sands of Varn much easier. So he could argue that it's been better for him to have these things. But in the past, as, as a child, as a teenager, <coughs> as a young adult, <coughs> pardon my cough, The things that he was going to get to and he was going to grow up into and his his workplace or his place of his career and his path, his life path within the arcology was set. And the penultimate sort of goal of that, what would that be? I want to roll on a table here. And I want to roll on the um, basic moves here, or the basic oracles, uh, or the the uh, yes. So let's um, let us roll on descriptor and focus. <coughs> Fifty-two. 52. Hidden. Okay, so hidden what? Hidden what? Hidden uh, six. Hidden artifact. Hidden artifact. So I'm going to write this in our current book here. Um, there is a hidden artifact as part of Ardell's background that is important. And so Ardell is connected to a and I'm going to put asterisk because we don't know what this hidden artifact is um, hidden artifact back in vault that's his home well you know that's his uh, his origin original home there we go so what is this hidden artifact is this something i think 
I don't think that this is anything that he knows about, except that it is a secret. It is a, um, it is a, it is, it is something that high ranking individuals within his class get to know about. And it's that knowledge at the end of his career that he will learn something or know something that others do not. So I think that is, that is, that is the, uh, that is what that background sort of, uh, thing is. His, uh, wow. Words. Great. You know. So what's, what does this look like in the mind of Ardell right now? This, I think, looks like a, as he is slumped down in, in a now peaceful situation, recouping from his losses and trying so hard to fix his bike to make it, you know, runningable again. But he himself is basically, he's wounded and at zero health and is struggling. And he's recalling what brought him here. His curse, if you will, his firebrand ability that got him expelled. And he's sort of kicking himself if he had only hit it better, if he only did X or Y or Z, followed the code, he could have stayed and learned about this hidden artifact and maybe that would get him off of this rock that has caused him so much trouble up until this point. So I think that's where we're going to... Um, That's that's where we're going to sort of pick it up as he comes to from this recollection sort of dream. And this allows us to add one momentum mechanically to the beginning of the story here. So what we have here is a situation where Ardell is trying really hard to just survive out here in the sands of Varn. And... Just because I want to start us off with a sort of solid grounding, uh, I'm going to say that it has been enough time to have gone by that he has resolved the previous uh, uh, session's uh, situation. Uh, he is still wounded. His bike is still uh, battered. And uh, the... The information that he is about to divulge, or rather that we're going to figure out from the end of last session, um, the new sheep that might have been connected, the bandit that had caused all this trouble, was this person involved with the Lurch, the person, um, the um, mystic that wanted him to survey the, monol the monolith hex. Um, and that's where we are now. We are in... The monolith hex, which is, uh, where are we? The monoliths. I am a abandoned city, mystic abode, dried up lake, the wreck, the towering monoliths right here. So this is what, where we are right now. And... He is trying to get to the mystic abode in these uh, in this hex, and if I remember correctly, the the uh, find a book on l like linguistics for contacting Azathoth. Um, journey to the Winding Canyon, and then we arrive there and we get to the monolith. Uh, area right got it I'm recapping for myself um, this is a lot of stuff that we hadn't we hadn't um, started before so what I'm gonna do just to start off the weather just to see if the weather is gonna do anything special is I'm going to um, roll my new 
uh, northeast, so northeast. So it is still a still day. Still, the desert landscape is still untroubled by this susurrations of the heavens. Visibility is good. So the sands of Varn are being kind to, to um, Ardell here. Still and clear. Okay. So he still needs to survey more of this area here. Um, and I think that is going to be some more. He's going to do the first move of the session that is going to be meaningful in any way. And I think we are going to... Uh, <clears throat> here we go. We're going to secure an advantage. We're going to assess the situation, make preparations, and attempt to gain leverage. So right now, um, our, our poor guy is hurt, and so he wants to find material to, one, get his bike better, and two, get um, supplies to heal himself. So I think what I would like to do is we're going to secure an advantage with... Um, expertise, focus, and observation. So he's going to utilize his wits about him to look around the area. And he's going to create a fire. He's going to um, get a better camp set up so he can heal better. Um, and we know that we are in an area that is... Um, towering monoliths are everywhere. So this is uh, an area that is not rife with resources, but there might be camps in, and that stuff otherwise. So this is not a vow or anything like that. This is just part of the survey of the, of the hex, but also part of his securing resources to help him heal, hopefully later. So let us roll... Uh, versus wits and roll with ooh, a seven and a five. Ooh, that sucks on the challenge die. Wits is three, so that's five. Um, and that is still a miss. I almost want to use no, we don't. We that's a miss. You fail. Um, you fail or your assumptions betray you. Pay the price. Okay. So he is out scouting around the area for supplies and things for his his uh, his hover bike and himself. And what happens? Um, I honestly think that the obvious is that there's nothing around. Um, but what does that do? And I think that might just loot... Uh, mechanically he might lose spirit because there's nothing about to help him um and i think that is what i'm gonna do because that just makes the most narrative sense so he's going to um he's going to endure harm and he's gonna lose spirit he's gonna lose one spirit go from four to three and now he is going to um have to endure um spirit and hopefully, he comes back to camp just completely, uh, what do you call, uh, completely just, uh, he, he lost the wind in his sails, so to speak. And even though it's a nice, beautiful day on the sands of Varn, he just comes back, he looks over at his bike, and it's like ramshackle. It, it it works, but he spent the better part of a whole day just scouring the sands for for anything that would help him. And he just sits down in a slump. And he just goes, God damn, this just is brutal. I just want to go home, but there is no home. So he is going to endure stress. Um, so he takes minus one. And then uh, he's going to, his spirit is currently at two, and heart is two. So he's going to roll with spirit, 
uh, seven and seven, so plus two is six. Oof. On a miss, here's the thing. On a miss, it's worse than you thought. Suffer an additional or lose momentum. I think we're just going to lose momentum here. And we're going to go from five down to three. And we have a complication. Because whenever the challenge dice are matches, depending on if it was a miss or a hit... It is a complication or a uh, opportunity. But we are going to, we lose the two momentum. So it just slows us down to an utter halt. We come back, we are disheartened a little bit. And we are just absolutely decimated of our energy. He is going to, just to help withstand this, he's going to make fire with his firebrand ability. And he's going to make camp. And he is going to... I'm going to get to this in a second here. He's going to try to... Um, uh, he's, he's trying to heal himself. Uh, obtain... Mend your own wounds... Uh, rolling iron or wits, whichever is lower. So iron. So his 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 grit, and he is going to try to uh, roll. And this is what's going to affect. That complication is going to affect this. Um, I think that he is going to. Oh man, a six and a nine. I'm rolling really high and a two. So this is a weak. This is a miss as well. On a miss, the aid is ineffective and the situation worsens. Pay the price. So things are just spiraling down for our, our explorer, Ardell Santos. And I think the most obvious one is that I think his spirit is going to go down by a lot. He goes from four to three. He's going to go down to one because of this. And the complication, he goes through more of his supplies minus one as well so he is still he is wounded zero health one sub spirit four supplies and he cannot mechanically we can't really just keep rolling this and that's fine so i think what we're gonna do here <clears throat> right now in this particular session is i'm just gonna recall so he is wounded, disheartened, uh, the hover bike is almost busted, right? Wounded, disheartened, hover bike is almost busted. Uh, out of steam like he has been losing momentum this whole time uh, no momentum and no new leads for his survey survey vow this is a situation where do we, does Ardell in this mental state, does he want to forsake this vow and do something else? At this point, just because me, the player, I have been away from the table for so long, I don't know if that's the correct choice, but I almost feel like a reset would be great in terms of like where the story might go. Or just kind of leave this go off and just have it still as an unfinished vow. And we can move on to something different. So I think what I want to do here is he has been rolled, he has had the worst of luck. And I think because of all of this, and he spent so much time and no health is gaining, 
uh, if you remember a while ago, he got infected with uh, you know, uh, uh, different, different nanobots from that ship. And whenever he fails with his a protocol bot or his a firebrand ability, he we have to tick this up. Now, also, his health has been low for so long, and his spirit is going down as well. So his mental health, his physical health is really low. And as anyone knows that whenever your immune system is down, you are subject to even more things going wrong with your body. And he already has an infection, and it is going to spread. So we are going to automatically fill in another segment. So now this is half full. We got four more segments before something happens to this infestation. And I think that is, that is a culmination of the complications that has been happening and to ride off of that double sevens as well, plus another failure on trying to heal himself. Things do not look great for Ardell Santos in this moment. But what can we do about it? Let's see here. I want to think in real time. What would Ardell Santos do? What happens next? I'm going to step away from the character for just a second and step into the solo gamer's mindset, right? We have a tendency to spiral our own characters, and this is exactly what's narratively happening to Ardell Santos. But if you've noticed, I haven't outright killed him. During the previous session, he he was wounded, he got busted, he got hurt, but I just let the the uh, re resolution of that whole thing happen, and the bandit probably made off with a, a few supplies, and maybe that's why his uh, supplies went down, and uh, or just roughed up his bike for whatever reason, and left because maybe there was a storm in the moment. But that all happened off screen, if you will. And as we come back, he's just reminiscing of where he could have been. And he just is too, too distracted on his past to focus on the here and now to help him heal. And that is probably why he didn't find the materials and kept failing his role, his, his attempts at healing himself and setting up camp didn't go well enough so he's just he's sitting down staring out on the open blue cerulean sands underneath the shade of a large monolith with like a little overcropping outcropping that is shading him from the sun and he is absolutely just disheartened and he is humbled and feels small in this moment so he is actually going to take a moment to meditate and sort of recharge his himself. And so he is going to um, uh, roll spirit. And let's see what happens. A one and a five, and then six plus spirit is currently at... I can't remember now. One. So seven. That is a strong hit. On a strong hit. Take up to plus three fire. So he his fire goes back up to full. And I would say that during all of this, he, he is sort of talking to himself, basically talking to Ziva, Ziva, Z-H-E-E-V-A, Ziva, his, his, uh, his brow-laden protocol bot that uh, helps him with cultures and stuff like that, and sort of has a back-and-forth conversation with himself, sort of, about his state. And he's sort of going around the camp, just sort of out of it. So how does one shake yourself out of this? Like, I could just say, see that there's no way out of this linear problem. And inside this bubble, he is spiraling. 
Ardell Santos is indeed basically killing himself slowly. He's not helping himself, he's not healing, he's not finding supplies, and he has no momentum to do those things. So I want to inject something to, into Ardell's situation that will stir the pot. Now, sure, I can just come up with something, but of course, uh, those who watch me and those who know me know that I love tables. So I'm going to look at some tables here. And I think what I do, I want to um, ask the oracle. Um, is the next encounter going to be helpful? And I'm going to say this is likely. Because at this moment, narratively, Ardell is at, at a rock bottom mental state and almost rock and actually, you know, very badly wounded and hurt. So he may think that this is the end. This is where he dies or this is where he fades into nothingness and the sands overtake him and he becomes one with the sand. So I'm going to say... Uh, that it is a 50 50 50 chance that this is going to be well if it's 50 50 let's just use the yes and no i got this at gen con and it's just a yes and no three yeses and three no's so let us just roll this and if it's yes there's going to be some sort of npc that comes and helps him if it's no it's going to be some sort of situation that propels the story forward but is not helpful to his current situation yes okay so we need a, a some sort of aiding NPC so I'm going to roll up a sort of character situation here and what we can do is God, I love these tables so much actually you know what I'm going to say it's a Fa Nomad a Fa Nomad is a traveling folk of the Blue Desert expert trackers skilled at ambush and escapes parties who who wrong the Fa will be subject to pursuit, nighttime sabotage, hit and run um, attacks, and every other inconvenience manageable. So let's go look at page 74 for more details. Um, 74. Fa nomad camps, believed by some to be the children of Va, the blue goddess of empty spaces. The Fa are known throughout Varn for their resourcefulness, their ability to survive without drinking water, and the blue color of their skin, which can vary from deep indigo to a blaring cyan. The Fa usually travel in family groups or larger clans, but others are solitary, seeking danger or enlightenment in the furthest corners of the desert. So, I think I'm going to roll up an NPC of of a of a fa nomad camp and so a npc aids ardell and this is basically the the sub the the title of this particular situation and it's taken me this long just to kind of get there but this is what happens when you sit down and start playing and you haven't played in a while. So let us roll a d20 to see what kind of NPC. A 20. Ooh. A widow of a previous leader. Okay. Or, let's do two of them. Three. Or, a spouse of leader's rival. I think we're going to do a widow. Okay, so a 
Alpha Nomad Widow, right? Um, finds Ardell. Fa Nomad Widow. So that's that's what we know about this person. Fa Fa Nomad Widow comes up and what does this person want? Let us roll a character. Let's let's actually look at first look. Let's see what what this person looks like. Uh, 81 looks, uh, ooh, tattooed. Okay, so tattooed. And the initial disposition is cooperative. Cooperative. So that's really good. And their role as a, they, they're a widow of a leader, but their, their actual role, let's see, two. Um, I don't like agent. I'm not really a fan of agent. 25. Um, 25 is <laughs> explorer. Okay. Tattooed, and so they are an explorer. So they're probably a, an explorer, like scout type person that goes around, and they are cooperative. And let's let's um let's roll uh, their name. And I know that Fa have their own naming structures as well. Let's look at the, their 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 names. <clears throat> okay, so. I gotta reorganize myself with uh, the names of these individuals as well. Uh, <clears throat> Fa Nomad. It's <clears throat> All right, so we have. Hmm. Well, they are You know what? It, I like the idea of them being a little more mystical too. So let us roll a character's name from the reference guide of Iron Starforged. Uh their given name is 4, so um Elisa and uh, Alisa, what? 43. Um, Alisa Metal. So, Alisa Metal. Alisa Metal. That's their name. And so, so Alisa Metal comes up to Ardell. And with her tattooed blue skin, and she's wearing like one of those long dusters, but is her bodysuit is like etched with various curls of uh, tubing and various other ways to keep the 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 heat out and the cool uh, cool water in her body. And she comes up to Ardell as Ardell is distracted and sort of, to be honest, not looking great and sort of napping. And I think we're going to zoom out from Ardell's story here. And I think what would be really interesting is for next session, I want to have a little one-off one story on how Alisa Matal ended up at Ardell's camp. But I don't really have enough time to delve into that tonight. So what I want to do is I want to like flesh out her sort of story, her 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 character stats, if you will. So we're gonna create 
her, her Edge Heart Iron Shadow and Wits, um, and a short vow. Um, because I think that would be that would be interesting, and I want to use a lot of the information from here uh, to do that. Um, so what I think I want to do is I want to go to that Fa Nomad Camp page because they have um, they survive leader, and they have and they want um, their numbers right transport mood um, and various things like that. So. Um, I want to see what there's a sort of, uh, ongoing personal conflict, right, for, for uh, Alyssa Matal. So let's roll a d20. Uh, 18, we have wedding plans. Interesting. Wedding plans. I have some. I have some ideas. Wedding plans, and let us roll a NPC thing for those wedding plans. Let me ask the oracle: Are the wedding plans for her? I'm gonna say that is likely. So uh, seventy-five or less. Forty-four. So that's with a twist. Uh, with something special. I would say it's not even necessarily it is for her, and also she is going to be the bride. And she, remember, she is widowed. Wedding plans to be bride to, let's roll NPC B for uh, spouse of leader's rival. Okay, to be the bride to... Oh, the previous, she was a widow of the previous leader and there's wedding plans for her to be the bride of the leader's rival. So, wow, now that is an awesome sort of storytelling moment there too that we can dig our uh, uh, teeth into. Uh, to be bride to... Um, rival leader now that that is wild so ongoing personal conflict wedding plans to be bride to the rival leader um and i think i think i her her edge heart Iron, Shadow, and Wits are each going to be something here. I just don't know what yet. Um, let us, so we got three, two, two, one, and one. And I think that because she is an explorer... I think we're going to do um, wits, uh, no, edge at three, heart at two, iron at two, wits and shadow at one. Um, yeah, I think that's, I think that's what she is going to be. So between both Ardell and her, um, their shadow is their worst complete stat, so they're not very stealthy together. Um, wedding plans to be bride to the rival leader. So I'm going to wrap up tonight's session with Ardell in Dire Straits being, being come up to camp, a fa, a tattooed, and cooperative explorer scout, Fa Nomad, by the name of Alyssa Mattel, who has her own personal story. And we're going to pick up next session with her sort of origin on how she came to be at Ardell's camp. And then from there, we will pick up the story with 
maybe both of them working together. Maybe Ardell will have an actual companion. Um, and that will be interesting. So until next time, folks, this has been, uh, this has been an amazing rediscovery of the game and my story. And it's nice to be back at the table. So look, f I'm looking forward to doing more. Um, and until next time, folks, I'll see you on the flip side. Peace.